Hello! In this video, I'd like to talk a little bit about some of the nuances and differences between embedding a movie versus linking to movies within PowerPoint. We'll also talk about some of the pros and cons of each method and discuss why you might want to choose one or the other. So, as you know, you can play movies directly within PowerPoint, and I find this to be an immensely powerful feature because personally, I think that presentations with movies are infinitely more engaging than ones that only have text. However, uh, you know, as Spider-Man's uncle once said, with great power comes great responsibility, so it's important to understand how to do this in a fashion that works for your workflow or organization. So, to start off, um, in this case, I'd like to assume that we have a database of movies on your computer that you'd like to use in a presentation that you're going to make. So to illustrate this, uh, I've created a small example database here in C Movies. And as you can see right now, this is a very small database. It only has two movies in it right now, one of them called handlaunch.mp4. And if we do open this up, we can see it's really just a picture of uh, a student throwing in an aircraft in the Australian Outback. And there's also a second movie called yeah. searching.wmv here. And again, this one, if we take a look at it, it's just a picture of a simulation of three vehicles searching for a target in some type of environment. But at the end of the day, these are two movies that I would like to embed into a PowerPoint presentation. So first off, let's make a note of their relative file sizes. So if you notice here, hand launch is 32 megs and searching.wmv is almost three megabytes here. So nothing huge, but the idea I want to put in your head is if you had a lot more movies and some of these could be much, much bigger, we need a workflow that's going to allow us to include these movies in one or multiple presentations that we would like to make. So, why don't we go ahead and start that right now. To illustrate this, why don't we go ahead and start with making a folder somewhere on my machine where I would like to create my presentation. So, let's just start it here in the C drive. I'll go ahead and create a new folder. Let's call this maybe My Presentation 01. And I'll go into here and I will just go ahead and start a new PowerPoint file. And again, let's call this the same thing, my presentation 01.pptx. So I will double click this to open it. Now, if you notice, again, we have a blank PowerPoint template. Let's go ahead and add a slide here. And what I'd like to do right now is I would like to insert or embed or somehow use those two movies that we just created. So at this point, you have two options. You can either directly embed that movie into the PowerPoint file or you can create a link to it. Let's look at the first option. In order to do this, we come up here to obviously insert video, video from my PC. And we are gonna go ahead and search for that location. So I think we had our database of movies was here in the C drive, and then we had a folder called movies. And you see our two videos here. So what I'm gonna do here is let's go ahead and grab handlaunch.mp4, and I'm just gonna click on insert here. And let's resize this to be a little bit more appropriate here. We could even go ahead and do things like, you know, add a text box with some description. Here is a video of a student launching a, an aircraft. All right, and we'll maybe center this over here like such. And let's say this is my very simple presentation right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit save right now. And let's take a quick look at what were the consequences of doing that. I'm gonna close this file right now. And let's come back to this my presentation 01.pptx file. If you notice right here, that uh, the file size here by a linking that or by embedding that movie, the file size has grown to be quite large. This presentation is really, really simple, right? There's one slide with one movie. However, what's gone on right now is that movie has been directly embedded or included into this pptx file. If you noticed over here, the file called handlaunch.mp4 was about 32 megabytes, and now this PowerPoint presentation is a little bit over 32 megabytes. Uh, let's make another addition to this. So again, I will open up this PowerPoint file and we can do the exact same thing for the second movie, right? I can go ahead and repeat. I will insert video from my PC and let's do the same thing for searching. I will click on searching and I'm going to hit insert. And again, I will reposition this. And now I have these two videos that are directly embedded into my movie. I'll go ahead and hit save. 
and I can go ahead and start this slideshow if I want. And you can see that now, yes, this is all great. Both of these movies play. I can use them uh, simultaneously. I can do whatever I'd like here embedded directly into the presentation here. Let's go ahead and exit the slideshow and take a look at what's going on. So again, I'm going to just save this and close it. And again, let's come here and take a look at the file size. Uh, my file has now jumped up to 37 megabytes, as probably can be expected, because if you look over here, again, handlaunch.mp4 was 32 megs, searching.wmv was another 3 megs. So you add this up, and this is where we're getting this file size. Here's an interesting trick. If you, uh, if you don't believe me, what you can actually do here is if we want to see that those files are actually embedded in this pptx file, I'm actually just going to copy this. And I'm going to paste it in the same location here. And here's a neat little trick that somebody showed me. All you need to do here is rename the file extension from a pptx to a zip file. And I'm going to say I would like to change this. And this is now a compressed zip file. If I actually extract the zip file, so I'm going to go hit extract all and show the extracted files when it's complete. Let's go ahead and extract. Here it is. And if you look in here in this PPT folder into media, you'll notice, let's actually look at this as details. Here it is you can see for a fact that what PowerPoint has done is it's basically embedded or wrapped those two files the handlaunch.mp4 and the searching.wmv it renamed it but basically copied it byte for byte into the pptx file this is exactly why that file starts growing larger and larger as you include more and more movies here so to recap here what we've just done right here is you ha start out with some database of movies. Again, we have this searching.wmv and we have handlaunch.mp4 here. And again, you could have tons of other movies. You could have hundreds of megabytes, gigabytes of movies here sitting on some database. What we ended up doing then was in some presentation, we said, okay, I would now like to insert this video directly. So this is the method number one of how we can get movies into a PowerPoint presentation. What we did here is we actually asked PowerPoint to make a unique copy or a duplicate of those files and embed it into the actual PowerPoint file. Now, this might work at some situations and might not in some others here. Let's think about this. Where would this be a potential problem? Well, if you think about this long enough, what happens if I, instead just of making one mo presentation, what if I wanted a second presentation? If I did this exact same thing, I would be copying and making a complete duplicate set of files for that second presentation as well. And as you can imagine, let's say you have three or four or 50 of these different talks here you're making and duplicating all of these movies in every single one of these files so storage could get to be a problem so to summarize this method some of the pros of this are well one nice thing about this method is actually the movies are directly embedded into that PowerPoint PPTX file so it's actually somewhat self-contained what that means is it's actually fairly easy to share this this presentation. You can simply send them one pptx file and it has all of the movies and dependencies embedded into it. However, I think some of the cons outweigh the pros for this method because some of the bad things that are associated with this method is obviously you are creating duplicate copies of all of these movies when you embed them into each of these different talks here. So as you can probably imagine, this is going to require a ton of storage space because if you have large movies and you have a lot of presentations, well, that's just going to multiply the amount of hard disk space that this is going to take. All right, so let's see if we can get around this problem by examining another way to work with movies within PowerPoint. So in this example, let's do the same thing we did earlier, and we'll create a brand new folder to hold a new presentation that I'd like to make. Let's call this folder my alternate presentation 01. And again, I'll go into that folder, and I will start a new PowerPoint file called my alternate presentation 01 and I'll open this up and let's embed a movie into this new PowerPoint presentation so again let's go here to insert video video from my PC and I'll find the movies that I want but instead of clicking on insert let's hit this drop down and we'll insert a link to the file here 
And again, I can go ahead and resize this and work with it and embed it into my movie or into my presentation, however I'd like. Let's do the same for that second video as well. And again, instead of insert, I'm going to use link to file. Okay. And now let's go ahead and save this and I will play the slideshow just to convince you that from a audience perspective, this still seems the same. The movies play just like they did earlier, right? So both of these movies are playing within my presentation. However, the advantage of this method here is let's exit the slideshow and close the presentation. And let's take a look at the size of this right now. So if you look now, the size of this PowerPoint presentation, it's only two megabytes, although it's referencing these uh, two large movie files here. So in this scenario, the actual PowerPoint file stays significantly smaller because in this scenario, let's come over here and take a look at the architecture. Again, we started with our database of movies and now I wanted to make this presentation but now what's going on is I'm using this second method where I want to insert just a link to the video. So what happens in this presentation is I don't copy a unique um, version of those files into the PPTX file. I'm actually just including a link and maybe a small thumbnail to those movies. So if I do this for a second presentation and also just link to the files, you'll see that all of these different presentations that I make on my machine, they stay small in file size because they're only referencing the movies that exist in the database here, right? Just a single instance of these movies. So some of the pros of this method are obviously you only use a link of the movie in each one of these PPTX files, right? So the PPTX file does not actually hold the movie itself here. Therefore, we're not creating bunches and tons of duplicate movie files all over my machine here. And the major win or advantage to this method is that the size of the PowerPoint file remains small here. However, what are some of the problems with this here? Well, one of the cons here is the actual PPTX file does not contain the video file. And as such, this video file has to be provided separately in order for the media to play. This is one of these problems and this is probably the reason why I can't tell you how many conferences you've probably been to right where the presenter is trying to get the movie to play but it just isn't working it's just not working it's probably something related to this where they may have linked to the movie but they didn't actually provide the actual file um, in the folder where they're trying to play it so what this does is this requires a small extra step in order to share the presentation with others so let's talk about this now if you want to share this presentation with others and ensure that they can play movies appropriately, you need to do the following. So let's go ahead and open up this presentation in question. And I will go ahead now and click on File, Export, Package Presentation for CD, and Package for CD. Now, I don't actually want to burn this to a CD, but instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the lower left button which says copy to folder. This will bring up a small dialog that's going to allow me to choose the name of a folder. I'm going to call this maybe complete presentation package. And let's look for a location. Again, for simplicity, let's just drop it here on the C drive. And when I click OK, you're going to get this little dialog where PowerPoint realizes that actually this PowerPoint file references other external movies which may be located elsewhere on your computer, aka these movies that we've linked to. Do you want to copy all of those to this folder that we're creating? You definitely want to click yes because that's the whole purpose of this, right? Is I want to make one folder which has not only the PowerPoint.pptx file but has all the dependencies such as movies that are needed to show the presentation appropriately. So I'm going to click on yes and you're going to see it's going to copy all of those to this location. So now I have the small PowerPoint file and it also has packaged up and moved those videos and dependencies to this location. So at this point, if I go up a level, I can simply send or zip this up or compress it. But long story short, this single folder has all of the dependencies I need to make an accurate presentation. So if I can put this on a USB drive and bring it to my conference, I should be good to go and everything should play smoothly. So uh, I hope this video was helpful and allows you to work efficiently with movies in PowerPoint.